Well, welcome to Roy on Rescue. Um, I thought I'd get out into the spring weather. We're having a gorgeous day out here today and I couldn't stand being inside any longer. So I thought I'd come out here and answer a question that came in from a student who was asking about the effectiveness difference between back slaps and chest thrusts for an infant who's choking. Now, the question was, is there a, a difference between the two and if I had my choice, which one would I use? Would I use the back blows or the chest thrust to try to get an object out? Personally, in a conscious infant who's choking, which means they're not able to breathe, they're not coughing, they might be gagging, but they're not actually getting any air movement in or out. We call this a complete obstruction. Um, this, this situation, I would almost always approach from a back blow first. Now, keep in mind, you're talking to me now on Roy and Rescue. This is, I'm not going through the actual um, real curricula procedures as far as what the book teaches when we're actually going through a class. I'm talking about you're hanging out with your friends, you're at the card table, you're at the kitchen table, um, you're enjoying some food, and all of a sudden you look over and there's an eight-month-old that's uh, gagging and choking on something. What would you do? You know, I've had very good success with actually getting obstructions clear just with back blows alone, or back slaps as they're referred to now. I think that's the softer, gentler sounding approach to it. But really, they're back blows. We're not crushing the baby, but we're taking the heel of our hand between the shoulder blades of the baby, and we're doing nice, firm back blows, or now referred to as back slaps. The physiology behind this is that we're actually knocking some of the wind out of the baby, quite literally. We're compressing those little ribs in the back that's uh, forcing trapped air out of the lungs, and it's going to pop that object out of their airway, which is the size approximately of their pinky. So this is a very effective procedure to get those, um, that mucus out or get an obstructive object out. Remember that in the infant, we actually are wanting to put their head lower than their feet so that we have gravity working with us, not against us. So you wouldn't leave them in a sitting up position. You would literally invert them upside down, supporting the face and the head to do the back blows. After about five of those back slap back blows, you would then flip the child over, protecting head and neck. If you do not see the object come out, the baby does not spontaneously start breathing. We now would actually draw a line across the nipple region of the baby and drop the two fingers just below that nipple line onto the center of their little chest and do five inward thrusts on the chest. If the baby goes unconscious, we're going to go right into actual CPR, which in that case is all chest thrusts. And to be um, and to quote some of the information that I found, we actually have limited documentation in regards to chest thrusts and back slaps and effectiveness um, differences. However, chest thrusts have been noted to get objects out with a, a nice um, amount of air displacement. This study was actually done on um, post-mortem. They were actually doing some experiments uh, on some bodies that were already dead and they were induced to a full obstruction and then with chest thrust they were displacing the objects quite readily. So uh, even on a deceased person this type of procedure works. So from Roy on Rescue I hope this was helpful. Um, back slaps, back blows or otherwise as long as we get the object out that's the point. Go forth and rescue. Have a great day. Bye-bye.